Hello everyone! Welcome back to Royalty Soaps and the Royal Creative Academy. Do not be bamboozled by the lack of colorants behind me. I just have a project that I'm working on and I had to take them all down. Today's video is the third soap in our beginner soap making series. So it's the final soap. Hopefully by now you are a little more comfortable with the idea of cold process soap making and prepping all of your raw materials and actually making the soap. So I've decided to pump up the volume with this design. We're going to do a drop swirl. We're going to do three different colors. It's going to be very easy. You can have a thicker batter. You can have a thinner batter and either way it's going to look great. So of course the first thing I am doing is suiting up in proper soap making gear. If you have not watched the rest of the beginner soap series, please don't start with this video. Go on back, watch the life safety video, gather your raw materials and prep them in accordance with the rest of the videos. Also there's some valuable reading materials down in the description box below that I highly recommend you peruse before starting your soap making journey. Got my long sleeve shirt on, got my closed toed shoe on, got my long pants on, got my gloves on, got my hairnet on, going to put my goggles on, and we can get started making soap. So for this project, you're going to need your base oil recipe, whether it is the upgraded version or the basic version. Of course, you will need your spatula and you will need your lye water solution. You will also need your three 1000 milliliter or one liter pitchers. If you would like to add some texture, oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> if you would like to texture the top of your soap, you're going to need a plastic or a stainless steel spoon. And if you're going to swirl the top, you might need a popsicle stick or a toothpick. And hey, if you have a chopstick, that's even better. And before I attach my blender head to my blender base, I'm going to pop it in the oils here, give it a good shake to get the air bubbles out, lay it on its side, unscrew my lye water container, pick it up with both hands and pour it down the shaft of the stick blender to help avoid air bubbles. Once I've gotten all the lye water solution out, I'm gonna screw the lid back on the container, set it safely to the side, attach the blender head to my stick blender and give this a good mix for anywhere between 15 and 30 seconds on high. I should also mention that I took the temperature of these oils and they are both at 80 degrees. So within 10 degrees of each other, warmer than 75 degrees Fahrenheit and cooler than 90 degrees Fahrenheit. So they are at the perfect temperature for making soap with this recipe. Now it's time to split our batter into three equal portions. You can measure this on a scale if you would like, but I don't see any need for that, especially with a drop swirl. It does not have to be perfectly even. Nobody is going to know if you have an ounce more of one color than all the others. Just eyeball it and if you get it off slightly then pour out of the container you filled up more into one of the containers you haven't filled up as much which is obviously this one. <laughs> this recipe has been specifically formulated to give you plenty of working time. Wow that looks nearly perfect. Now we have our three colors from Mad Mike that have been pre-blended with oils as specified in our prepping video. I have my little popsicle stick to help scrape it out into each one of the containers. So in this one here, I am putting Blue Tide. In this one here, I'm adding Tahitian Teal. And in this one here, I'm adding Pow Pow Purple. So these are perfect mermaid colors. I'm gonna move these three cups out of the way. They can be washed and reused. And before I blend in the colors, I'm going to go ahead and add the fragrance oil. I am using Hawaiian Sea Mist. I thought it would be fun to add in a tropical scent for a mermaid soap. And if you are doing the royal upgrade version of this recipe, you will have two of these to split between three containers. So with our fragrance oil evenly split between these three containers, I'm going to give them a quick mix with my blender to make sure both the fragrance oil and the colorant is fully incorporated. And then I'm going to go around each container with my spatula to make sure that none of the color is sticking to the sides. I'm going to burp the stick blender first to get rid of all the air bubbles. <laughs> And I blend 
mine for about six or seven seconds when I'm working in batches this small. It doesn't need a whole lot more than that. Scrape down those sides, make sure all the color is incorporated. This fragrance oil smells absolutely stunning. All right, so with everything blended in, it is now time to pour into our mold. I've zoomed you guys into my dirty little mold. <laughs> <laughs> to clean up a silicone mold, you can just take a rag and wipe it down. Because it's soap, it mostly comes right off. I typically steer away from using any sort of cleaner on this, just because it will take off all of your marks. Perfect. Now there are many different consistencies you can make a drop sorrel with. I'm going to be using a pretty runny consistency today, just to show you guys what it'll look like. And if you would like to see some examples of a thicker, consistency drop swirl well take a look at any of the rest of my videos because it is almost always super thick so drop swirls you can do whatever you want you can put as much as you want or as little as you want I typically like to start by covering the bottom of the soap loaf with all of the soap okay so like the whole layer covers the bottom and then I like to make two stripes so I'll go down and come back up and then I will take my next color and go down and come back up as close to the first color or even on top of it as possible. And then I may start a new pattern. So I might go down, up, down with the next layer, down, up, down, and down, up, down. Now maybe you would like to swirl it in a circle. So you go around in a circle like this. Test this out and see what you think creates the best drop swirl for your soaps. Everyone has their own unique flavor of drop swirling. And just because I like to do mine one way, doesn't mean you're gonna like to do yours the same way. That's something to experiment with, test out and see what you like. I have not scraped out my containers yet, but I have poured the bulk majority of the soap into the mold. And so to swirl the top of it, I'm going to scrape my little container and I'm going to very gently make a pattern on top of the soap. We're going to make straight lines. So here you can see I'm pouring really, really close to my soap loaf. And that is just so that the color will stick on top of the soap and not puncture all the way through. This doesn't have to be 100% even. It can be kind of messy. This is your first time doing this type of swirl, so don't be too hard on yourself. Just gonna scrape all the rest of that out there. Going to the next color, I'm gonna pour right next to the purple, not on top of it, just very close to it. And take your time. You should have plenty of working time. Don't rush. This fragrance soil is very well behaved. And finally, I'm gonna pour the last bit of the soap down the line as well. Just filling it in on top. Awesome. And now breathe in, breathe out. Good job doing that very difficult work. It's time for the fun part. So we're going to swirl. First, I'm going to swirl the first couple of bars with a toothpick so you can see how intricate the swirl is with a toothpick. I'm just going to run it back and forth, back and forth, and you will see this beautiful pattern start to be created on the top of this loaf. Isn't that nice? Now, using a popsicle stick, which is a little thicker, I'm going to do the same thing. And you can see what a difference it makes to use a utensil that's a little thicker. It's a completely different look on the top of your bar. And then on this final one, I'm going to swirl in a figure eight pattern. And now it sort of looks like a fiery flower. I could also go in 
pull some more little details out into the edges. Maybe pull some back through into the purple. This is where you get to be creative and use your imagination. And once again, if you'd rather just texture the top, you could do that as well. I am going to spritz the top of the soap with rubbing alcohol. And if you have the royal upgrade for colors, wait until the soap is not shiny on top anymore. So it's gonna be pretty set up. I would say that's probably gonna be 20 to 30 minutes depending on how thick your batter is. And then add a little glitter if you fancy. This hollow biodegradable glitter will complement these colors perfectly and really make the tops of your soap pop. After that, we're going to do as we have done in the previous two videos, place this in a safe, secure environment away from children, pets, and anyone else who is not wearing proper safety gear and let it sit for three days and we'll come back and we will slice up your third and final soap in the beginner series. Also, I'm sorry for the fireworks in the background. I cannot stop the city of Terrell from celebrating whatever they're celebrating. <laughs> The soap has been unmolded, so it is time to cut it. I've made the little markers, and now I'm going to press down. And your first drop swirled soap should look a little something like this. Now remember, I poured my soap batter when it was really, really runny, which is why I have all these very thin lines, and it looks sort of like a watercolor, but you can wait for it to thicken up a little bit and get even more defined drops if you like. And one of the fun things about a drop swirled soap is that every single bar is very, very unique. I mean, just look at the difference between these two. Oh, one more with my knife here. Wow, look at that. I can't wait to see the cut bars that you guys share with me on Instagram and on social media. Everybody's drop swirl is going to look a little different and I'm so excited to see them. Now I'm gonna cut the loaf with my cheese cutter, make those nice straight cuts. Here's what the end of this side looks like. Also, how cool is that top? Last bars here. Split Put those right in half. Gorgeous. And look at all three of those different tops. You guys have to let me know which one you like the best. I'm gonna clean up the edges of these bars with a potato peeler for a nice professional finish. And the finished bar should look a little bit like this. It's now ready to be cured for four to six weeks. Well guys, by now you should have three batches of absolutely stunning cold process soap. And with 30 bars total, there's plenty to go around to your family and friends. I hope you guys enjoyed the first part of the beginner soap making series in the Royal Creative Academy. I promise I will be making more videos to go into this series as time goes on. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, leave them down in the comment section. And if you see that somebody has already suggested the idea that you had, give them a thumbs up so that I know which videos you guys want to see the most. If this is your first time watching any of the videos from the soap making series, please start at the beginning. Educate yourself first before continuing. Download all of the reading material and PDFs and checklists below so that you can get started on the right foot. And I will see you guys soon. And so until next time, have an absolute Absolutely royal day and bye for now. Seriously though, tag me in all of those amazing creations. I can't believe this series is already coming to a close. Tell me all the things you learned. I'll see you guys soon. Okay, bye.